I'm going to be putting the best NHL players on their rival teams, meaning that we are going to see some of the worst jersey and player combinations we have ever seen in the history of time. As already, you can see Connor McDavid in a Calgary Flames uniform is just diabolical. It is something that I never wanted to see, but I'm going to have to see here at NHL 24 as I've gone across the league and chosen the best players and putting them on their rival teams. So let's go ahead and take a look at where everybody stands in the new age NHL. So starting out, the Boston Bruins are going to have Elias Pettersson. Still, Brandon Carlo is there. Nick Suzuki is also on the roster. Funny enough, he's only an 85 overall. Pavel Zaka is there. I didn't mess with Boston too much. I did remove a bunch of players from their roster, but adding back is only going to be Elias Pettersson from Vancouver and I believe Nick Suzuki from Montreal. Also, Montebo will be coming from Montreal. I don't know how Bruins fans are going to feel about that. So the Calgary Flames have one of, if not the best team in the entire league at the moment. Connor McDavid, their best player at a 98, obviously from Edmonton. They also are going to have Quinn Hughes at a 93. Brock Besser is also going to join the roster. He's an 88 overall. And in goal, they're going to be rocking with Stuart Skinner as their starter. Also coming from Edmonton, he has medium elite potential. Still very young, only 24 years old. The Chicago Blackhawks are going to have Robert Thomas, Dylan Larkin, Alex Dabrinkit, Patrick Kane, and Jordan Cairo all on the roster. So a very different lineup for Chicago compared to what they're used to right now in real life. Honestly, a much better lineup. They're going to win a lot more games. And in goal, I don't think I messed with their goalie. Still rocking with Mrazek at an 80 overall. Colorado is going to pick up Jason Robertson and Miro Heiskanen from the Dallas Stars, a 92 and 91 overall. Dallas Stars are going to pick up Nathan McKinnon and Kale McCarr. So that is a big, big upgrade. They also still have Rope Hintz. Lindell is there, Pavelski. This is a very good roster. I would not be shocked if they won the Stanley Cup or won multiple Stanley Cups in this simulation. The Red Wings are going to have Seth Jones. Wallman is still there. Mo Sider, Gossa Spear. But really, they're not going to change too much outside of Jones. The Edmonton Oilers are going to have Anze Kobitar. Still, Matias Ekholm is there. Evan Bouchard is also still on the roster. I thought I added Drew Doughty here as well, but I guess I didn't. So really, the only player they're going to pick up after losing Drysaddle and McDavid is going to be Anze Kobitar. And they're also going to pick up Jacob Markstrom as their starting goalie at an 86 overall. And for the Florida Panthers, they are going to have Nikita Kucherov as their best player now at a 94 overall. They're also going to have Victor Hedman at an 88 and Steven Stamkos. LA Kings are going to have Leon Dreisettle as their best player at a 93. Pretty much the same exact team outside of that, though. Uh, in goal, I believe I don't touch. Yeah, I didn't touch Cam Talbot. He's still going to be their starter at an 84 overall. Now for Montreal, they are going to have Austin Matthews at a 95 overall as their best player. Brad Marchand is also on the roster at an 89 as well as Hampus Lindholm. I don't believe I changed too much else, but Jeremy Swayman... Their new starting goalie, I don't know why he's a 92 overall, but I guess we're going to rock with it. Montreal is definitely going to be a much improved team. The Rangers are going to pick up Matthew Barzell and Noah Dobson. Meanwhile, the Islanders are going to have Adam Fox and Mika Zibanejad. I also did not change the goalies. I didn't really mess with goalies too much. Oh my God, Sorokin's a 95. Whatever roster I downloaded, these overalls are literally all over the place. Ottawa Senators are going to have William Nylander and Mitch Marner on their team. They're going to pick them up a 91 and 92 overall. Philly is actually going to pick up Evgeny Malkin and Brian Rust, who are both 84 overall, so not really the greatest pickups at the moment. I mean, Malkin is at the tail end of his career at 37, and Rust is a 31-year-old who really hasn't been the same in like three years obviously pittsburgh is not gonna have crosby anymore but they will have alexander ovechkin who is an 85 overall this guy really felt low about ov only scoring eight goals in the first half of the season good news is he's up to 25 now as he has 18 in his last 24 and eight in his last five they're also gonna pick up john carlson sean couturier and travis konechny who is their best player san jose is actually gonna have trevor zegers as their best player now at an 84 overall Obviously, this team is not great, and it's not going to be that much better with Zegras. St. Louis Blues are going to pick up Connor Bedard and Taylor Hall from the Chicago Blackhawks. Obviously, Bedard is only an 84, but he does simulate pretty well in this game, so he should help out St. Louis. Tampa Bay is going to have Alexander Barkov and Matthew Kachuk on their team. Also, Gustav Forsling will join the roster as a defenseman. I also kept the goalie, so Vassy is staying in Tampa and Bobrovsky in Florida. Toronto is going to have David Pasternak, Charlie 
Charlie McAvoy, Brady Kachuk, and Claude Giroux. So a very different lineup here for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Maybe even a better lineup. I mean, they got their number one D-man. They got the sniper who can score 60 goals and 100 points. The Vancouver Canucks are still going to have JT Miller, but they will end up picking up Elias Lindholm and Jonathan Huberto, 285 overalls. I mean, already in real life, they have Elias Lindholm, so they're also going to add Rasmus Anderson, who's also an 85. The Washington Capitals are going to pick up Sidney Crosby and Eric Carlson, a 91 in 88 overall. Obviously, seeing Crosby in a Capitals uniform is just wrong. And also with Ovi in a Penguins uniform. So now that we know the entire roster of the NHL, all the moves that I made throughout the league, let's go ahead and simulate five full seasons and see if some new teams can go on and win the Stanley Cup as everybody right now is on their rival teams. But before we go ahead and do so, if you guys do enjoy videos like this, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on notifications so you don't miss a single live stream or video that I put out. So at the end of the very first season, the Winnipeg Jets are going to finish as the best team winning 54 games, losing 24 and 4 in overtime, 112 points, followed by the Florida Panthers. LA was good. Montreal was good. Vancouver and Tampa Bay. Now, if we take a look at the bottom, we have Seattle, Anaheim, and San Jose. I mean, these teams were not really ever going to be very good, especially since I've added some super teams to the NHL. I mean, a team like Seattle, 25 wins. That's kind of rough, but they are only a third year franchise. Connor McDavid is going to end up leading the entire league and scoring with 102 points now on the Calgary Flames, followed by Austin Matthews, who had one hundo. David's going to lead everybody in scoring with 102 points now on the Calgary Flames, followed by Matthews, who had one hundo. If Pasternak had 96, Marshawn was up there with 95 on Montreal. He's only an 88 overall. Marshawn's only an 88 overall, so I'm kind of surprised that he put up 95 points. Jack Hughes had 92, Kachuk 92, Jack Eichel was up there, Elias Pedersen had 90. If we take a look at the goals, Matthews is going to lead with 61, followed by Pastas 59, but Dard in his rookie season had 48 in the St. Louis Blues. I mean, he's actually playing with players that can pass him the puck now. Nathan McKinnon had 47, Connor had 43, JT Miller 43, McDavid 42, as well as Jason Robertson, who has pretty much disappeared this season along with Tage Thompson. Two guys that last year had amazing career high years and this season really have taken a step back. Tage Thompson especially, he's absolutely terrible this year. Now for defenseman, Kale McCarr is going to lead with 89 points, followed by Hampus Lindholm who had 85, Yossi had 80, Hamilton 75, and Victor Hedman 75. We take a look at the goalies, Bobrovsky is going to lead in wins with 46, followed by Hellebuck 43, and Joseph Wall who had 41. And on the shutout side, Bobrovsky will also lead, so he's most likely going to end up taking home the Vesna. He had nine shutouts Hellebuck at 7, Jari 7, Vasi 7, UC Saros at 6. And here is our playoff matchups in season number 1. So we are going to simulate and see who advances to the Stanley Cup Finals. And in the Stanley Cup Finals, we have a matchup between the Calgary Flames and the New York Rangers. So obviously McDavid up against Matthew Barzell and even Artemi Panarin still, I believe. Let's see who's going to go on and take home the Stanley Cup at the end of year number 1. And the Flames are going to get it done here in year number 1 as they defeat the Rangers in six games in the finals they were up 3-0 oh, I actually thought they were going to end up blowing the lead and losing but well, luckily McDavid is going to capture his very first Stanley Cup unfortunately it's going to be with the Calgary Flames which I mean is not really that great winning a title with the Flames before you did with the Oilers as Quinn Hughes is going to take home the Conn Smythe. Five goals and 29 points for him, the former Vancouver Canucks captain. But being real, this Calgary team is honestly a little bit of a super team as there it is, the Stanley Cup about to be raised in MSG but for the Calgary Flames as their captain. Oh right, McDavid's not even the captain. It's going to be Mikhail Backlund lifting the Stanley Cup before McDavid which is absolutely wild. Regardless, there it is. The Calgary Flames have gone on and won the Stanley Cup in season number one. Now for the playoffs, Quinn Hughes is going to lead with 29 points. He only had five goals, but 24 assists in only 26 games. Bobby McDavid, who had 25. Brock Besser had 20. Marshawn had 20. Kuzmenko, 19. Breadman, 19. So the Calgary Flames had a lot of offensive help in the playoffs. Austin Matthews is going to end up taking home the Ted Lindsay and the Maurice Richard, while the Art Ross will go to McDavid and the Hart also to Matthews, the Norris to Kale McCarr, the Conn Smythe to Quinn Hughes, the Vesna to Cam Talbot, not Sergei Bobrovsky for some reason and the Selkie Trophy will also go to Matthews. So he had one hell of a season on Montreal. I mean, won the Selkie, won the Rocket, 
won the Hart Trophy as well as the Ted Lindsay. As we move on to season number two now, obviously Toronto fans are not going to be happy seeing Matthews have so much success with Montreal. As I mean, in real life, he doesn't have near that amount of success. As Toronto are basically choke artists in the playoffs every single season. Now, at the end of year number two, the Dallas Stars are going to end up finishing as the best team going 54, 23, and 5, 113 points. Followed by the Florida Panthers who were up there. Tampa Bay was good. Vancouver, New Jersey, Winnipeg, Ed Edmonton somehow made it up there. If we take a look at the bottom. We have Washington, Anaheim, San Jose, and Montreal after having a pretty good season last year. I mean, Matthews individually dominated. They're only going to win 33 games this season. And the Calgary Flames, who literally just won the Stanley Cup, are not even going to make the playoffs. This is what I mean. EA Sports is simulation. I don't really think it matters who is on the roster. I think certain teams simulate better than others. And they just randomize it like 100 times over every time you simulate the same season. Nathan McKinnon is going to end up leading everybody in scoring with 109 points. Followed by Matthew Kachuk, who had 103. Matthews had 98. McDavid was up there with 97. So good season by the two players that missed the playoffs. Al Connor had 97. Jack Hughes. Barkov had a pretty good season on the Tampa Bay Lightning. On the goal side, again, Matthews is going to lead with 67. Followed by Tage Thompson's 52. Crosby had 42. Jack Hughes, 42. Robertson was up there. Kachuk had 40. Jarrett McCann had 39. Now for defenseman, Makar again is going to lead 17 goals and 92 points. Followed by Quinn Hughes, who had 80, Noah Dobson, 79, Hamilton, 77, Carlson, 75. Bobrovsky, again, is going to lead in wins, this time with 45, followed by Demko's 41. Markstrom had 41 on the Edmonton Oilers, as well as Andre Vasilevsky. Now, on the shutout side, Samuel Urson is going to lead with 7, followed by Markstrom, who had 6, Aiden Hill, 6, Cam Talbot, 5. And here we go yet again. This is our Stanley Cup playoff bracket for year number 2. Here are our matchups. Let's see who goes on and makes the Stanley Cup Finals. And in the Stanley Cup Finals, we yet again have the New York Rangers, but this time they're up against the Minnesota Wild, who I believe I didn't make any changes to their roster, so they're just rocking with the same players. Here's an example of another team that simulates really well compared to how good their team actually is. Minnesota goes on and wins a lot of Stanley Cups in my videos. Regardless, regardless, let's see if they are going to do it here in season number two, or are the Rangers going to rewrite the wrong from last season and win the Stanley Cup? Cup. And the New York Rangers have done it. They have gone on and rewrote the wrong from last season, losing the Calgary in the Stanley Cup Finals as they go ahead and beat Minnesota in six games. Fortunately for them, they're going to have to win it here in Minnesota and not in New York. Imagine how crazy MSG would go if the Rangers actually won the Stanley Cup on home ice. I feel like that would be a very crazy atmosphere to be in. And for the con Smythe, it's going to go to Igor Shosturkin. He was rocking a 932 save percentage and a 230 GA so very good stats by Igor and that looks nothing like Igor Shosturkin whatsoever EA Sports get this man a face scan please don't be lazy he's one of the best goalies in the entire NHL there's no excuse for him not to have one and there it is, the Stanley Cup about to be raised to the Rangers here in year number two, as Matthew Barzell will end up getting his first Stanley Cup of his career as the greatest captain of all time, Jacob Truba coming to lift it for the first time in his career as the New York Rangers have won it all here in season number two. Now for the playoffs, Matt Zuccarello is going to end up leading in scoring with 27 points, followed by Kaprizov, who had 25. Rossi had 23 and 13 goals. Chris Kreider was up there. Noah Dobson had a good playoff run, as well as Connor Bedard in only 18 games, had nine goals and 21 points. I mean, he was a minus four, but this dude's only 18 years old. He's still pretty much a baby in the NHL. Nathan McKinnon is going to end up taking home the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. Matthews will win the Maurice Richard. The Norris is going to go to Kale McCarr. The Conn Smythe to Shister. Durkin. Thatcher Demko is going to win the Vesna, and the Selkie will end up going to Alexander Barkov of the Tampa Bay Lightning. So the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to have a great season, somehow leading the entire NHL in points only with 48 wins. They did have 10 overtime losses, but it looks like the NHL was pretty balanced this season. 106 points is going to win the President's Trophy. Vegas came in second. Dallas, Edmonton was up there. The Rangers are always going to be dangerous. Winnipeg and Florida. At the bottom, we have Ottawa, San Jose, and Anaheim. Pretty much the same teams that are going to be down here almost every single season. David Pasternak is going to lead the NHL in not only goals with 61, but points with 108, followed by Claude Giroux, who had 103, Marchand had 103, Kobitar had 102, and Kale McCarr 100. 
Now, if we take a look at the goals, other than Pasternak, Matthews came in second with only 46. So I don't think the offense this season was that high. Zach Hyman had 44. Shout out to Zach Hyman. I mean, we are literally living in a universe where Hyman is a 50 goal scorer. Giroux is going to have 43. Rantanen, 42. And McKinnon, 42. Let's take a look at defensemen here. Kale McCarr is going to dominate again. I'm pretty sure he's going to win the Norris almost every single season. He had 100 points, followed by Eric Carlson, who had 86, Lindholm, 85, and Adam Fox, 85. Cam Talbot is going to lead the NHL in wins with 41. And for shutouts, it's going to go to Jeremy Swayman, who is on the Montreal Canadiens. He had seven on the season. Hellebuck had six, Kemper six, and Saro six as well. Again, this is our year number three playoff matchups. And in the Stanley Cup Finals, we have a rematch from 2020 between the Dallas Stars and the Tampa Bay Lightning. This time, it's not going to be in a bubble in Alberta or Toronto. I don't even know where it was, honestly. Regardless, we have the Stars up against the Lightning. Let's see who's going to go on and win the Stanley Cup in season number three. And the Tampa Bay Lightning are going to do it here in year number three as they defeat the Dallas stars in five games it was really not that close they were the better team and i mean it wouldn't be a pasta video without the tampa bay lightning winning the stanley cup even with changed rosters i mean they have alexander barkov as their captain matthew kachuk is also here no kucherov no headman no Steven Stamkos, but they are still going to get it done on the back of Andre Vasilevsky. As he's going to go ahead and win the Conn Smythe Trophy, a 932 save percentage and a 221 GAA. His second Conn Smythe of his career as he's probably now one of the greatest goaltenders in the history of the NHL. Top 10, maybe even top 5? I don't know, that's up for debate. Regardless, there it is, the Stanley Cup being raised in American Airlines Arena. Not for the Dallas Stars, but instead for the Tampa Bay Lightning as here comes their captain alexander barkov coming to lift the cup for the very first time in his career as tampa bay are stanley cup champions in year number three nathan mckinnon is going to end up leading the entire playoffs in goal scoring with 11 and points with 26 followed by matthew kachuk who also had 26 barkov at 24 pavelski 21 joe pavelski man ageless wonder 11 goals 21 points 39 years of age the best tipper in the entire nhl even though i would probably want more than the tip pause david pasternak is going to take home all the awards the norris is going to go to kale mccarr the consummate of course went to vassy connor hellebuck is going to win the vesna and the selkie will go to matthews yet again and Austin Matthews picking up his second Selkie trophy of the video. So it seems like EA also is overrating his defense along with a lot of Toronto fans. So the Dallas Stars are still trying to win their first Stanley Cup of the video. They are the best team in the regular season as they went 50, 24, and 8. Followed by the New York Rangers. Vegas was up there. Winnipeg, Tampa Bay, and Toronto at the bottom. We have again the same teams pretty much. Montreal again is very bad for some reason. Even though Matthews is playing out of his mind in the simulation. Nikita Kucherov is going to end up leading everybody in scoring with 114 points. Followed by Braden Point who had 108. David Pasternak had 104. Quinn Hughes 101. He's probably going to end up winning the Norris Trophy. Jack Hughes is up there. McCarr had a good season as well as Matthews and McDavid. Now on the goal side, Pasternak is going to lead with 67. Followed by Matthews who had 59. Kucherov had 45. McKinnon 44. And Kaprizov 43. Quinn Hughes is finally going to dethrone. Thrown Kale McCarr for the most points by a D-man. He had 101, obviously. Only 13 goals, but 88 assists. Connor Hellebuck is going to tie for wins alongside Aiden Hill. They each had 43. And for shutouts, it's going to go to UC Saros, who had 9. And this is our year number 4 playoff bracket. Let's see who goes on and makes the Stanley Cup Finals. And in the Stanley Cup Finals, we are going to have a rematch from last season between Dallas and Tampa Bay. Obviously, Tampa Bay won it in, I believe, 5 games. It was not particularly close. Let's see if Dallas can get the revenge, or will the Lightning go back-to-back, -back winning their second Stanley Cup of the video? And the Dallas Stars are going to get the revenge over last season, beating the Tampa Bay Lightning in six games in the Stanley Cup Finals, so I guess they actually turned it around. They win their very first Cup of the simulation. Tampa Bay will not go back-to-back, -back. and again, for four years in a row, I believe every single Stanley Cup winner has won the Stanley Cup, as they are going to have to raise it in Tampa Bay. I mean, raising it in Tampa Bay is not too bad whatsoever. Kale McCarr is going to take home the con Smythe five goals and 30 points obviously him and mckinnon are very good playoff performers so that would definitely help out the dallas stars in a playoff run dallas would be a lot better if they had mckinnon and mccarr compared to uh robertson and heiskanen as the dallas stars are gonna win the stanley cup in season number four here comes jamie ben coming to lift it for the first time in his career 
as congratulations to Dallas finally getting the job done. So for the playoffs, Alexander Barkov and Kale McCarr are going to tie for the most points at 30, followed by Braden Point, who had 26, Kachuk had 25, Duclair had 22, as well as Artemi Panarin. Nathan McKinnon honestly didn't have that great of a playoff run, only 6 goals and 20 points in 20 games. Kita Kucherov is going to win the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. The Maurice Richard will go to David Pasternak. The Norris somehow still to Kale McCarr over Quinn Hughes, who is statistically better than him. McCarr is also going to win the Conn Smythe, the Vesna to Aiden Hill, and the Selkie will go to Alexander Barkov yet again. Well, we are definitely in the end game now. The Colorado Avalanche for the final season are going to finish as the President's Trophy winners. They won 60 games games on the season so they were very dominant followed by the florida panthers 152 vegas 150 boston was up there detroit and dallas who literally just won the stanley cup jason robertson is going to end up leading the entire nhl in goals with 60 and points with 107 i guess he took my comments really personal followed by kyle connor who had 105 kucherov had 104 casey middle stat was up there with 98 points on the season as well as patrick kane with 97 now on the goal side other than robo kyle connor is going to have the most at 53. Matthews had 51. Kucherov, 45. Archer So had 45. Daniel Sprong scored 40 goals on the Detroit Red Wings. Quinn Hughes is going to lead in defenseman for scoring with 90 points. Now, if Kale McCarr still somehow wins the Norris Trophy, I'm going to be mad because there's no reason he should even sniff it, honestly. But Fox, Yossi, Heiskanen, and Hughes were all better. Georgiev is going to break the single season wins record with 51 wins and for shutouts, it's also going to go to Georgiev, who had 9. Too bad he could not play like that for me in my be a pro series but we're not going to talk about that we still won the stanley cup despite the fact that he was terrible and this is our final playoff bracket of the entire video and in the stanley cup finals we have a matchup between the colorado avalanche and the detroit red wings colorado needs revenge after seeing makara mckinnon win the stanley cup and the red wings need to get their very first stanley cup of the video so let's see who is going to do it here in the fifth and final season. And the Colorado Avalanche are going to get it done in six games over the Red Wings as they go on and get revenge for seeing McCarr and McKinnon raise the Stanley Cup last season. The Colorado Avalanche with Jason Robertson and I believe Miro Heiskanen are also going to be able to raise the Stanley Cup. So maybe that trade worked out for both parties as they do defeat the Red Wings in six games in the finals. Now, if we take a look at the con Smythe, it's going to go to Jason Robertson. He had one hell of a season 14 goals 28 points the con smythe was definitely well deserved for him as i believe for all five seasons now i can't remember last year if dallas won it on home ice i don't believe they did but everybody's gonna raise the stanley cup not on home ice but they win it and the other team's burn here comes gabriel landiscott coming to lift the stanley cup for a second time in his career as he is a two-time Stanley Cup champion and the Colorado Avalanche in the fifth and final season are going to go all the way. Just like Corey Perry with Connor Bedard's mother. So no surprise here is Jason Robertson is going to have the most goals at 14 and he's going to end up tying for the most points alongside Miko Rantanen who also had 28. Casey Middlestad had 23. David Perron had 20. JT Comfer 18. Jason Robertson is going to win all the major individual awards. Quinn Hughes is finally going to win his Norris Trophy. The Calder was going to go to Connor Bedard. The Con Smythe to Robo. Alexander Georgiev is going to win the Vesna and the Selkie will go to Connor McDavid of the Calgary Flames. And that is going to do it for this video boys. If you enjoyed it make sure you leave some support we have gone ahead and put the best nhl players on their rival teams and we saw what happened i mean mcdavid won a stanley cup with calgary before he won one with edmonton which is diabolical but regardless it was a very fun simulation let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next thank you all for watching and until next time don't be silly wrap your willy